Hi frolicking friends and welcome back to another recoloring tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to um, create custom recolors. I did this top using this new method which uses gradient maps instead of actions to do the recolors and let me tell you I think it is pretty life-changing and in this tutorial I'm also going to be showing you how to make your own custom overlays so as you can see here I am changing the color of the tank top underneath the jacket so stay tuned to figure out how to create custom overlay accessories and recolor using the gradient maps this tutorial I'm going to be recoloring this sweater from Snowy Escape. Um, I'm going to kind of presume that you have some knowledge of recoloring. If you don't, I encourage you to go check out my two-part series on recoloring using a batching method. Um, I'll link the videos below and in the eye. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have downloaded some gradients um, from your chosen palette. I know that they are available for the Sorbet Remix palette at this point, and then Candy Shop should be coming out shortly. Next, you need to import your gradients into Photoshop. Um, so your gradients are right here, this little icon. Um, and then, so I already have mine preloaded, but you can um, load gradients here. What I actually ended up doing is I went into my folders, um, so my hard drive, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, presets, and then gradients, and I dropped them into this pre-existing folder because sometimes I feel like things move around or get wonky, um, and so I felt like putting them in here was the safest. The reason for that is I feel like if you load it, sometimes you'll get a... So if I were to say load, ingredients and grab the candy shop it's gonna add them on to the end and so then I don't know it just looks messy so that's that's why I chose to just put them into the folder next we need to create a swatch test to make sure our base is correct you're gonna want to open up your file and you're gonna go to this little icon here down on the bottom um, and you're going to want to add a gradient map and then you're going to click on this little thing to bring up your options. Now if you've just loaded it in, you're good to go. If not, you'll need to hit load and load in your um, swatch for the recolors you're doing and you're going to click on the first swatch and you're going to hit OK and make sure that reverse is not checked. If it's checked, then you get a weird look. This just keeps it in the correct order. And then what you're gonna wanna do is add a new layer, and then you're going to grab your paintbrush, and I like to pick on the color swatch. I showed how to do this in the other video um, for the same one. So this is Popsicle, and I like to just do a little swatch test. So as you can see, this is pretty close, but maybe a little too dark. Now I had done some other swatch tests on some different versions, and the white color, let me get rid of the gradient map, was probably closer, but I was worried that it might be too washed out, um, so I think another option, if there's not a white or there's not one you like, is you can click on the background layer and we're going to hit image adjustments and then you can play with levels or brightness. And if I just adjust the level slightly, you can see that that uh, color stroke swatch, so you can just mess around with it till it's pretty much the same color. Um, and you you know haven't lost too much details so I feel like that is perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two layers and I'm gonna save this as my base next we're gonna set up our layers for our recolor and I'm actually gonna reopen the original file that wasn't edited and I'm gonna do a control a control C control V to paste it over the top it's very very slightly adjusted but I want to use this to get my cutouts. So I am gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just gonna come in and cut out the uh, collars. So I selected that, I'm gonna do a control J and then I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing. Luckily this sweater has super easy cutouts. Some things may take a little more time to do this. So I'm going to cut those out and delete this layer. 
I'm gonna go ahead and merge down, double click and rename it collar, just so I know what it is. So the cool thing about the gradients is I can do two steps in one, and if I want the collar to remain unchanged, and I just wanna recolor the sweater background color, I can do that without having to take multiple steps and multiple back actions like I had to do using the other method. So the next thing that you're wanna, gonna wanna do is make sure that this is called background, which should be the case if you haven't done anything crazy. If not, then make sure you save it as a D3DDS and like start from scratch with your cutouts. And we're gonna create our batch action. And once you have it set up, you can just hit play with any cutouts on layers above it, as many as you need, and Photoshop is gonna do the magic for you. So if you have some folders going, you're gonna wanna you know, click on the parent folder. I'm gonna do this as batch recoloring DDS, and I'm gonna hit create new action, and I'm gonna name this tutorial. So we are going to go ahead and make sure the background is selected, and we are going to create a new gradient map. Again, make sure this is loaded in correctly. Pick the first swatch, which is popsicle, and hit OK. So as you can see, that cutout is the right color um, and it just recolored the sweater for me. So I'm gonna do a save as, so you can do file save as, or the shortcut is control shift or shift control S. And then you're gonna need to navigate to your folder where you save all of your batch recolors. I showed this in the other tutorial. Um, I went ahead and pinned mine in my quick access just to make this step easier. So here it is in my recoloring workstation. So I had a quick thought, um, the official release of the gradients um, is out, so I'm recreating my batch actions, and I thought to save the time of going through the menus and having to go into quick access and go here, I'm gonna go ahead and save like this file um, in the folder, and then I don't have to re-navigate it everywhere. And I'm gonna change this to a D3DDS and call this one. Now because this has the multiple layers, you do have to change this every time, which gets a little tedious. Save that. Feel free to pause the video and verify you have the correct settings to save your file. And then you're gonna click on this and click the next one. Control Shift S to save. Again, you have to change it to D3 DDS. Go to your recoloring workstation, call it two and save it and then you click on that and click the third swatch. Control Shift S to save it. Make sure you save it to D3 DDS. If you saved your file in your recoloring workstation, then you don't have to bother reopening that folder every time. That's why I had suggested it. Let's call it three and save it. And you're gonna continue this for every single color in the palette. So you just keep clicking through and keep on saving them. Okay, so I didn't actually finish, but let's say that I did. You're gonna come back up to your actions and you'll see that it's still recording and you're gonna hit stop. And so then you'll have that saved. So that was my tutorial. You'll see that my CS gradients, which is my actual one, is a lot longer because I did all 36 swatches. So I'm gonna now show you how it would work once it's already saved. I forgot to mention it, but please make sure the background is selected before you hit play. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my CS gradients and hit play. And it's gonna do all the recolors for me. I'm really curious to see how long this takes. I think it's gonna be faster and easier on my computer than the other former method. So if your computer is a little slower, um, this might be a better method of recoloring for you. All right, so that's done. I should have timed it, but it didn't take too long at all. So now I can just cut those files. This is my recoloring workstation folder, and I'm gonna drop it off in my sweater bow uh, folder here. And these should be ready to import into Sims 4 Studio. So when I was editing this video, I forgot to mention something that I personally always forget. Clearly I did when I did this sweater. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do before you import your color palette is you wanna come pick whatever swatch you want. You might have multiple in here, it doesn't really matter, but come over to the warehouse and do a search for secondary index. Usually I can get SE 
C in there and it pops up and you're going to want to change this to something else. Um, I've been doing a thousand and it seems to work. Some people do an even bigger number, um, but this just will make sure that if you have multiple recolors or if you're um, like it does your colors don't show up in the middle of the EA ones Which is what's gonna happen if you hadn't done this so 1000 is probably overkill, but um, It doesn't really hurt as far as I know so you want to change that first before you um, Import your palette. Otherwise you have to do an alternate method to uh, Fix the sorting which I guess I can show you in another video if you're interested So after you've changed that uh, secondary display index, you're going to come to tools, color palette, um, and you're going to find the color palette you want to use. In this case, I'm using Candy Shop Other, and you're going to apply a palette to package and press no to not keep the default swatch. And then I always like to do a quick little double click to make sure that the blue swatch is selected and you can press import and then click your first swatch and start importing those in. All right, so I finished loading those in, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this as is for now. And if that's all you wanted to do and you're fine with the white collar being as is, you could go ahead and, you know, go on to the next thing or load it in game and see what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make a cutout accessory. So I'm gonna show you how to make this collar a different color. Now, honestly, I would probably be okay leaving it just white, but I wanna show you for the sake of showing you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll probably want to use this file here. Um, because I like that this sweater has kind of the stripes on it. So I want to use that as the base for the collar. And so what I'm going to do real quick here is do a swatch test. So I'm going to add my gradient map and take that first color and add another layer on top to grab my paintbrush and just paint across it and make sure that that color is pretty good. Now what I wanna do is I wanna come to this uh, file that I was working on before. If it's still open, awesome. If not, it may be good to save this as a uh, PSD with the cutout. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that collar, Control A, Control C. Now here's a pro tip that I didn't know before. If you do Control Shift V instead of just Control V to paste. It's gonna do a paste in place. So I want to select the just the cutout. So I'm gonna Control and then click on the little uh, icon here for that layer. And you'll see the dancing ants around it. That's good. I'm gonna come over to Channels. I'm gonna click on the Alpha. So right now everything in white is essentially what this recolor is gonna apply to on the mesh and I only want it to be white where I just have highlighted. So I'm gonna grab any of these kind of selectors. I'm just gonna grab the magic wand. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna hit select inverse and I'm gonna paint in everything else black. So make sure that you have this as black. If it's not, you can do click this to reset it. And then you're gonna press control backspace and it's gonna paint in everything that we had selected black, leaving what we have here white. And then I'm gonna press Control D to deselect. And then I'm gonna re-click on the RGB layer. And then I'm gonna come back out here and I'm gonna delete that cutout because I'm gonna be using the blue one anyway. Then we're gonna come up to File, Save As, and then we're gonna save this as Color Cutout. And it is a D3 EDS and we're gonna save it. Now we need a test to make sure that worked, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a swatch and import and find that color cutout. And you'll notice here that um, the whole sweater didn't show up even though if we look at the PSD it existed. That's because we edited that um, alpha layer. So now we're only gonna see it show through on that part of the shirt and so it looks really weird right now don't worry about it though you can go ahead and remove the swatch and then you're gonna want to open another file of Sims 4 Studio so while your Sims 4 Studio is opening up assuming you have this collar cut out ready to go and it worked in that quick test you can go ahead and run your action on it to get it recolored and while that's working we're gonna do the next step so I have 
two versions of this open here and if it's glitching it's just my Photoshop running in the background and I'm gonna create a standalone mesh here this is gonna be the accessory for the collar and we want to choose something that is meshless um, the tutorial I used recommended using a um, face paint but with the new update you have to use a different file type which I don't appreciate so I actually use a tattoo I just usually do the lower back like <laughs> tramp stamp one but I think any tattoo would work um, so I just do that and I pick the first swatch and press next and then I like to click on this to keep the same name and then I just add on to the end here overlay and then we have a few things that we need to fix before we can go in and properly do everything. So I'm gonna go into the warehouse here and into the warehouse here. And I wanna kinda just make sure that some of the things, well, a lot of the things are the same. So let me scroll up to top. I see adult, elder, female, teen, and that's the same here. Um, this body type, I want to change this to an accessory slot. So um, I like to do like one of the ring fingers, so like middle finger left or something of that nature. Um, you can do, you can kind of choose any of the accessories, but I feel like the rings are pretty common. And this is going to be super important. Notice that the composition method here is zero, but this one is one. We need to change that to zero. That's like kind of how it blends with it. And so the tattoo kind of blends in with the body. We don't want that. We want it to just be, you know, completely opaque. I think that's the right word. Okay, the other thing that we're going to want to change, and you can actually change a lot of this in the other menu. So if it's hard for you to find everything there, um, in yours, you want to make sure it's not selected allow for random. So you can uncheck it here, but I'll show you the other place that you can uncheck it as well. The last super important thing is this sort layer. Now there is this sort search bar. So if you're having trouble finding these things, you can search them, but I'm going to come down and find, so like here I could do sort layer and you'll notice that this one is 16,000 I want to change it to one more so 16,001 because this is going to allow this overlay to be exactly one layer above this one there is a list of like all of the default layers but I just find it easiest to find what it is here and go one above it okay so that's the most important things from this you have your sort layer that you need to change and the composition method and then the other things i think you can oh and the body type but a lot of that you can actually change in this menu which just looks a little prettier than the warehouse so the, this is on the studio tab instead of the warehouse tab and then instead of texture you click categories so here we already changed this from the tattoo to the middle finger left but if you wanted to change it up you could do it here from this one you can also apply it to all swatches but some of the other things in the warehouse you can't do that make sure I'm kind of matching these the best that I can so age appropriate matches this is under the feminine fashion choice so I'm gonna match that there this isn't checked for alien so I'll match that the outfit types I want to match these as well so I'm gonna do that and fabric is cotton but one really important thing, if you didn't change it in the warehouse, you absolutely want to check allow, uncheck allow for random because you don't want random sims spawning the wrong accessory because this is only going to work with this specific top. And if you try this accessory on any other top, it's going to look super weird. And of course, the random generated sims are going to abuse that. So don't allow it for them. And then I like to hit save after I've gotten all of that set up. And then I like to open up my color palette and import that in. And by this point, files should be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. And I'm gonna have to paste them into a different folder so they don't rewrite these. So I'm just gonna call this overlay and paste those into this folder. And then you're gonna wanna come back to your Sims 4 Studio and begin importing all of those accessory swatches. So in um, this case, I don't see anything, but I shouldn't be too alarmed. I'm going to test it in game though. So I'm going to finish loading these in and then I'll meet you in game. All right, so I'm in game and I 
have loaded in those swatches here. So I do just want to point out here, um, you'll notice that that first blue swatch is separated from the second blue swatch um, by some of the default swatches, which is why that sort layer, secondary sort layer is so important to set at 1000 or something of that nature. Um, looking so cute, but I want a different color for the collar. So if I go to my accessories mm. and I check out the rings, um, it's probably one of these two, but it's super hard to tell what those are. So that's where the custom thumbnails are gonna come in handy. Yeah, this is the right one. So let's say I wanted to give her a pink collar. So then that will change just the collar and nothing else. So you can kind of create your own custom color combinations with that. So as you can see here in game, these are thumbnails I haven't created. Um, I did some for toddlers, but I don't have any for adults yet. But you can see um, some ideas for what that could look like. A lot of times people will do like a gray swatch. So like for example, for the sweater, yeah, so maybe I would do white. I don't know, it just depends. Um, or like this color. And then make the accessory like pink or whatever color you want. But that way when you look at the thumbnail, you can see clearly what outfit it goes with and what color is gonna change what. Um, and so then you would just snap a photo here and use that in your custom thumbnail. If you want more info on that, let me know. Otherwise, I hope this tutorial was helpful and happy recoloring!